after like two years of speculation and rumors of drama and friction between Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert, the Utah Jazz have done it. They have split up the duo. They've broken up the band. They traded Rudy Gobert. Uh, and uns uh, unsurprising that they would get rid of one of these two guys at least. Um, people were kind of speculating that this was uh, going to be the end after they had that early playoff exit this season again. But I don't think anyone expected uh, what they got for Gobert and that the Minnesota Timberwolves would come flying in off the top rope to be the team that acquired Rudy Gobert. There was a lot of uh, chatter linking, linking Gobert to uh, the Dallas Mavericks and the Chicago Bulls, primarily. Instead, he's going to stay in the West. He's going to go join the Minnesota Timberwolves, and he's going to pair up with Carl Anthony Towns as the first duo in NBA history to both be making $200 million or more for the same team. It's a crazy, crazy... Um, <clears throat> a series of events, I guess, that is showing even more now than ever that the salary cap just doesn't exist and money is uh, fake. These contracts are insane and teams just make it work. And that's kind of that. So the thing that's going to be discussed about this, of course, is what Minnesota gave up. So I'll go through what they gave up in this trade really quick and then talk about Minnesota and Utah Try to keep it quick though. I know there's a lot of news coming out today. I want to try to do shorter videos. So the full haul for the Utah Jazz for Rudy Gobert is Patrick Beverly, NBA Finals MVP, Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt, Leandro Balmero, and the Minnesota Timberwolves first round pick from this year's draft, Walker Kessler. That dude just took a picture holding his jersey. Like, that's brutal timing. He, like, just had that on the Timberwolves feed, like, two days ago. Uh, NBA's cold business, man. But the real story here is the, the Timberwolves are sending four first-round draft picks to the Jazz for Rudy Gobert on top of five players. Uh, the picks are three unprotected firsts coming from the Timberwolves themselves, and then a fourth that is via another trade the Wolves have made. That one is protected, I believe, in 2029. But DeJounte Murray just got two unprotected first-round picks in a three-first-round pick trade for the Spurs. Gobert now gets four firsts with three unprotected. And I have to say, before I get into the Timberwolves or the Jazz, the biggest winners of this trade might be the Brooklyn Nets because Sean Marks is absolutely rolling around in hysteria seeing what this trade was. Kevin Durant might fetch the biggest trade in the history of NBA. Like, in terms of assets and value and everything, this Durant trade might be the biggest trade ever. And I think this haul for Gobert is going to be something that actually makes it harder for KD to go to a destination he's actually, like, signing off on and wants to go to. Because he's under contract, so... He kind of, like, they can work with him on good faith, even though the <laughs> the last three years have been hell for that franchise. They can work with him, but now knowing that this is the type of stuff that's going to get you Rudy Gobert, and you're trying to trade Kevin Durant, I'm sure Sean Marks, uh, to quote a, a, like a wise man once said, yesterday's price is not today's price. <laughs> um, perfect timing for a Rudy Gobert trade to happen out of nowhere here if you are the Nets. So they're probably actually the biggest winners because they're looking at what's going to be probably the biggest trade of assets for a player in the history of the league when it happens. Um, anyways, for the Timberwolves, it's a huge overpay. Um, Gobert, you know what you're getting. There's limited um, offensive upside because they tend to just, in Utah, they focused on his, uh, his defense ability, his ability to anchor a team, his rim protection, and pairing him with Cat is probably the best use imaginable because the problem with Gobert and what kept getting him exposed in these playoff series was that teams would go small and they would send out a five that could shoot the three and they'd pull Gobert away from the rim or the Jazz wouldn't switch and they would tell Gobert to stay at the rim and it would result in wide open unguarded threes for guys like Maxi Kleber and Dorian Finney-Smith if you remember that Mavericks Jazz series from round one this year. So 
now here in Minnesota with Carl Towns next to him, Rudy Gobert can kind of tend to stay at the rim a little bit more often while Cat ventures out to guard the perimeter and to stop those wide open shots from happening. It's a really smart play on the on the part of the Timberwolves here. It's a little risky because teams are still going to have that ability to go small and five out just small ball all the way. Um, but like a team like the Warriors, where their small ball solution is Draymond Green, who's not going to shoot threes, and Kevon Looney, who just resigned, who's not going to shoot threes. You can rest assured that, you know, Draymond might attempt him, but he's a historically bad free throw shooter. So you're going to be able to just keep Gobert at the rim. You're going to be able to rotate a little bit more efficiently than the Jazz have been able to, considering their front court defense. The big thing here, other than that fit, though, Gobert and Cat is a perfect fit. But going from Mike Conley and Donovan Mitchell as your primary perimeter defenders to D'Angelo Russell and Anthony Edwards as your primary perimeter defenders is kind of just like a lateral movement. <laughs> it's kind of just more of the same here. Neither of those guys have really been earth-shattering earth defenders. Anthony Edwards, he's only been in the league a couple years, so he has every chance to probably blossom as he gets more physical, gets accustomed to the league. Wouldn't shock me if he ends up becoming a good defender. But with D'Angelo, his effort has improved, but he's not, he's not exactly clamping people up consistently. So still going to be a lot of pressure on Gobert um, for the Timberwolves, giving up. Malik Beasley, Pat Bev, uh, Jared Vanderbilt's actually a big loss because he was a pretty big high-energy player. But at the same time, being able to keep D'Angelo Russell and especially Jaden McDaniels, who will now probably assume the starting three role that he uh, had in flashes last year, the thought of a D'Angelo Russell, Rudy Gobert pick and roll with Jaden McDaniels, Cat, and Anthony Edwards on the wings is a beautiful thing. I'm, I'm very excited to see what that looks like because the D'Angelo Russell, his strength is pick and roll playing. If you think about his time in Brooklyn when he was an all-star, he had Jared Allen there. He had other bigs there that he was able to throw those lobs to and he was able to hit with those, those beautiful pocket passes. So this is a move to not only improve the quality of the team's defense, but to play to the strengths of your primary creator. So... D'Angelo Russell is a great passer. He's a great passer anywhere on the court, but pick and roll especially is where he is so lethal. Pick and pop with Carl Towns. Defenders are kind of able to sell out and stop that one way or the other. So having Gobert there as an option is going to absolutely open up the offense even more. Uh, they'll still be, of course, running probably most of it through Carl Towns, but the thought of being able to stagger you know, an offense running through Cat with a pick and roll offense that's probably going to be one of the highest um, highest efficiency rates in the league next season with two smart players like D'Lo and Gobert. This was a huge win for the Timberwolves because it's clear they thought about everywhere that he was going to fit with this team and every way he would make it work. So they overpaid for sure. Four firsts and five players is an unprecedented haul for Gobert. Um... But in a market like Minnesota, new ownership taking over soon, you got to make a splash. And keeping, you know, Edwards, D'Lo, Cat, and now Gobert, that's a formidable lineup with McDaniels at the three. That is a really, really good team. And as long as they're able to address some bench depth, re-sign Torian Prince, uh, signed Kyle Anderson away from the Grizzlies, if they can keep building a little bit more of that out, they're going to be a really, really fun to watch surprising team next year. So... For the Jazz side of things, though, Danny Ainge calling the shots. If there's one thing we know about Danny Ainge, the man loves himself an asset. And he went out and got nine uh, assets, if you will, for Rudy Gobert. Gets four first-round picks. Gets five, uh, five players. Yeah, sorry. Pat Bev, Malik Beasley, who will step in and contribute right away. Patrick Beverly, who will step in and contribute right away. Uh, Jared Vanderbilt step in and contribute right away and then who knows about Walker Kessler because clearly they're gonna they've hitched their wagon to Donovan Mitchell and it doesn't seem like he's going anywhere they've uh, reported that he's not going anywhere the Jazz two days ago finally just announced that uh, Boston assistant Will Hardy will be taking over the coaching vacancy that was left by Quinn Snyder so 
Utah is like in this weird spot where they're gonna probably try to do a Golden State Warriors type thing, where they inf infuse in young players and try to retool rather than completely rebuild. Donovan Mitchell is gonna have a ton of pressure on him this year to prove that the Jazz not only chose right, but that he can get back to the level of defensive effort that he had uh, his first and second years in the league, specifically that first year. Uh, the second year was a little bit of a disappointment, um, but as his offensive load has gotten bigger, his defensive effort has kind of gone down a little bit, which is understandable because, you know, when you're the primary option and facilitator, it, you're doing more and more. But going to be really interesting to see what else the Jazz have in mind. They lost Joe Ingles last year in a trade. Uh, they lose Gobert here. They're looking at, you know, they don't know what's up with Mike Conley. No one knows yet what he's doing. So it's going to be it's going to be pretty, um, pretty interesting to watch. They still have Jordan Clarkson, who is going to be in demand if they decide to trade him or if they want to keep him. It's a little bit of overlap there between Clarkson and Malik Beasley. They kind of occupy similar roles. Uh, I think Jordan Clarkson's a bit more of a playmaker than Malik. Malik is kind of a catch and shoot, but playing them both at the same time is going to create a lot of redundancy. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're grabbing Malik Beasley and Pat Bev and guys like that to try to go out and make another trade because Jordan Clarkson's a former sixth man of the year. Yes, he holds a lot of value, but he's also shown that he can play really well in this jazz system and alongside Donovan Mitchell. So I would be shocked if they traded him over flipping a couple of the players they just got. But, I mean, honestly, who knows? I With this type of war chest of assets now and their own picks and everything, it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, the way that Danny Ainge wants to go with it. Say the season doesn't start strong. Does everybody go up on the trade block? Say they're not done and they make a deal with Miami to facilitate a trade to Brooklyn for K or to facilitate a trade with Brooklyn for KD. So right now, Miami doesn't want to um, trade away Bam Adebayo, and KD doesn't want to go to the Heat without Kyle Lowry, Jimmy Butler, and Bam Adebayo there, and Brooklyn doesn't want to trade without any of those guys in it. So they're kind of hitting a stalemate. It seems like you know the, the Jazz are setting themselves up to be that facilitative team that can, like, hey, we'll throw in this if you want to send us a couple really good players and get some firsts back for you. So I, they might be in talks with Miami. That wouldn't surprise me. I think um, Phoenix would be an interesting spot as well because they have DeAndre Ayton. Um, really just looking at, at teams with centers or teams that are going to be moving off of centers because the Jazz just lost arguably one of the best ones, not named Jokic or Embiid, but Gobert is a dominant game changer on defense. This Jazz team is going to look really different. Mostly, though, I'm just surprised and impressed that they actually finally did it. After years of this will-they-won't-they they speculation, they finally did it. So, I can't wait to see what this Timberwolves team looks like. Jazz fans, Wolves fans, let me know how you're feeling in the comments about this trade. I'll be back with more news and updates later on. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the afternoon.